Monogramming is the most popular use of an embroidery machine today and I'm going to show you how to create a lovely monogram using your palette version 9 or version 10 or your PE Design Next or PE Design version 10. Uh, all of these products are pretty much the same. So we're going to start by on my desktop I'm going to open up my palette 9 program using the little icon. It'll take a few minutes to come. When you open up your screen, what you're going to see is this dropout box that asks you to, if you want to use any of your wizards. So um, the first one is going to talk about if, if you want to open up a blank page. The second one is going to, to ask you if you want to open up a pre-existing design. The third one is if you want to use any of your auto digitizing wizards and the fourth one is if you want to use your templates and I'm just going to use a blank page. Okay now go, I'll go ahead and hit open and then it will take you to the layout and editing screen. So I'm going to select a 4x4 hoop because uh, monograms are usually relatively small. Okay so now it's set up my page and I'm going to come over here and select text. I have a choice of regular text, little tiny small lettering, or a monogram. Or we're going to go ahead and do a monogram today. So I've selected the monogram. I'm going to come up here first of all and select what font I want to use. And I have a choice <clears throat> pretty much down here where it has the M. I can use a diamond or a script. Those are built-in in uh, fonts that are already optimized for for uh, embroidery. So I'm going to use the diamond shape. Okay, I'm going to select the size. I probably want these to be maybe two inches high. And of course I have set my preferences so that it is actually on inches. I, I am not too good with uh, metric but if you do use metric two inches is about 50 millimeters. Okay then I'm going to pick the outline fill, fill which is a line so so you can do it a uh, monogram either one color straight satin stitch or you can actually have it outlined uh, and if I do have it outlined I have a choice of a running stitch a triple stitch whoop, a zigzag stitch up top a motif stitch a stem stitch which is new and looks rather interesting or a candle wicking stitch or an EV stitch which is used for an applique. I'm not and then I could also select the color and if I select and I have many colors to choose from I can select my thread chart and here I can select the color for the line or for the region. I can and it has many popular brands of thread and I'm just going to use the brother 64 colors okay so I'm gonna go ahead now and if I have a fill stitch I can turn the fill stitch off and have it just be an outline as if it were an applique or something like that or I can change the color and I can also select either a satin stitch a fill stitch or programmable programmed fill stitch I'm going to put the cursor just in the middle and notice I have a bar about two inches high and I'm just going to, and you can come over to here. I have sewing attributes and AB text attributes. I can key in my letters on my keyboard or I can select them this way. So let's say I select a D, an E, and an F. Okay, I can do an off, I'm going to talk about off, uh, off, vertical offset and kerning a little bit later. So, okay, once I have selected, I just hit my enter key and in a moment it will come right up and it's showing here that um, you see I've made it blue with with a black outline now the keys that I have here is if I have a double cross in the center see right here when I select when I hover the cursor over top of some of the printed letter then it's going to show that double white white X that means that I can move the whole thing. At the top is a red circle, a little red dot. 
and I can use that to rotate my design. And if it's not quite straight and if uh, it's a little off, here's my favorite key of all, undo and redo. So I'm going to bring it back to straight up and down. I'm got here I can make it a little bigger or a little smaller and that does it proportionally. Each of the four corners will do that. If I select the center one at the top or the bottom, then it will it will leave the width the same but my height goes up and down. And the same thing on the center on both sides, I can make it thinner or thicker. Kerning over here moves the letters further apart. So see as I move it, and those letters, see they go apart. If you get things out of kilter and you're not sure what the normal is, then you click on this little house over here and it returns it back to the default. Okay, when I select a letter in the center, there's a little white diamond, and I select, say, that center letter, the diamond at the top is going to allow you to make that letter bigger proportionally or smaller. If I use the little, little green double triangle at the bottom, that is your vertical offset that goes up and down. And just the fact that this, this diamond is black just means that that is the one selected. So also, if I have it selected, I can control the vertical offset by simply hitting the, uh, the key over here, the little slider bar. I'm going to return that back to normal. And there, your monogram is actually done. Now, if I'd like to add little decorative patterns on the end, I'm going to go ahead and select it. Then I can come over here to add a decorative pattern. And I have several to choose from. I have little little tabs I can put this in or little frames. Um, let's just say I would like uh, these. Those are different. And I'll hit OK. And see, it puts them on the side proportionally. If I want to change the color of that, I click here, go to my color, and say I want to make them green, it automatically changes that. OK, now my monogram, I have it sort of how I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So I'm going to go to Home and just double check everything. And I'm going to go up to the little little file at the top and click on that and hit a Save As. Okay, I'm going to come over here, save it in the folder that I've selected. And I'm just going to use this tutorial folder. And I'm going to give it a name. And I will just call it DEF. And you can select the version of the... Uh, file that you that you want to use. Uh, I have 9.0 loaded on my machine. However, if I have an, an older machine, say about 10 years old, I may want to save it to a less compl complex version. The higher the number, the more attributes that are coded into the files. Um, the old machines just simply had needle position and maybe a cut and a tie off commands and that's all that was in them. So I could add, if I was using an older machine I'd probably save it down to version 4 or 5. Um, I'll leave it at, at 9 for now. Uh, if you have a multi-needle machine it needs to be at least version 8. It will give you your better tie offs and your better stitch out. So I've selected that. I'll hit save. Now I could also save as to a jump stick. I don't have one connected here, but I could, if I go here to computer, I don't have an external drive, but if I had a removable drive, uh, which is a, a jump stick, or my com machine, 
or my computer directly connected to my machine, I could go ahead and just just save it directly to the machine or to the jump stick. But I'll cancel for now. So it's ready to stitch out. So you can see monograms is as easy as that. See you next time.